Very happy to welcome to that Jameson show a man who has inspired me in so many ways <laughs> over the years. Comedically, uh, he's rocked my world and he's gotten me laid many, many times. Mr. Ah, David Coverdale. My pleasure, sir. <laughs> Well, you you are the you are the rocker of love, my friend, and uh, always love spending time with you. Thank you, devastatingly handsome Don. I called you the Dynamo, human Dynamo, this morning. Looking for, was looking forward to it. Congratulations <laughs> on your own show, dude. Thanks, man. We've been doing this for about a year, and um, and look at us. We still have our hair, so that's the most important thing, I, I think. Really? I know. I, mine wasn't <laughs> fitting quite so well this morning, but my elusive <laughs> butterfly, Elise, just fluffed me up rather. Fluffed yeah. me chakras, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I used to have the nice dark sideburns, but I don't have. we don't have the uh, the budget for a makeup person here anymore. So the, <laughs> Well, that was... That was your Wolverine gig, that one, the Wolverine Junior. Yeah, they used to be able to, to fill it in on the, you know, in the makeup room, but now, uh, now I've gone gray. <laughs> so no, you're looking great, man. Looking terrific. Who's your friend? You as well. Uh, so now, who's your friend on the on the desk here? Should we know this guy? Should we be introduced? Oh, this is, is Venom right here. Yeah, yeah. He's our little what's mascot. What's his name? Venom. Oh, Doug. Good evening, Venom. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Charming. Very nice to. Is he like a sidekick? He's a he's a man of few words, David. I was going to say satanic. It's all mind <laughs> tricks and stuff. Satanic sidekick. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we try we uh, we try to dress up the set a little bit here, and uh, you know. Oh, so you're not home. <laughs> no, no. But uh, in 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 the chaos of this world, man. Um, oh, I, oh. Yeah, it's 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 hard to leave home. And I actually did did the show for a few months from home. The, the wonders of uh, technology. But um, hey, man. You know, with, with what's going on now, this is my one hour that I can get out of my house and I could come here and I could be safe in my rock world and and talk to some of my favorite people in the world. It's interesting. I was talking to Brother Joe Elliott the other day, and he says, yep. if he has to fluff one more duvet cover. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the life of a rock aristocrat. Well, yeah, it, and that's what it's down to. It's like all, all the home projects are done, and <laughs> and so no, now I'm... Um, gotta, I've got to get out of here. I've got vacuuming and dusting to do today. Yeah, and <laughs> fluffing. <laughs> Wearing masks and gloves. I'm writing just songs about that shit. Yeah, oh there, my gosh. there well, there's a lot of fluffing going on backstage in the '80s, but um, that's that's oh. for another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I've actually been privy uh, to be let into the inner sanctum of David Coverdale before a, a concert, um, and um, I don't want to give anything away. But you create a mood back there, so I was wondering if you could. Yeah share with our viewers um just a little peek behind the curtain in your dressing room uh, backstage at a white snake show well it's filled with naked women obliging <laughs> naked women with handfuls of grapes and peacock feather fans okay. um and then about 40 minutes before showtime they're escorted back to their own individual buses and then uh my wardrobe girl <laughs> has been the amazing lauren carroll uh, for many years and is now the beautiful and gifted uh, amy brown and they decorate these what could be moldy horrible rooms backstage because after all nobody considers the artist when they put in beautiful theaters and arenas together but they decorated and drape it off so it looks like a sheikh's palace when jimmy page came to my london show he wanted to live there yeah. he loved it <laughs> yeah it's just a ambience to you know get me in the mood uh, uh for kicking ass yeah in, in new york city you you can you can rent those spaces out for uh, about 2500 a month <laughs> And you would still have to decorate. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Amazing. But they do, when we were touring a couple of years ago, um, Madonna was, uh, was uh, two days ahead of us or something in the same venues. Uh, and Lauren uh, just got received the biggest compliments from the promoter saying that the room she was doing for me was far superior to Madonna's. So there you go. <laughs> wow. Because oh, everybody sort of has their thing. I mean, you hear about guys like Marilyn Manson, who, you know, once had plastic put all down the floor and up the sides of the walls and then filled the whole dressing room with kitty litter. And then the temperature has to be set at 50 degrees and all the windows are blacked out. That is the exact so opposite. Kitty litter is his thing. 
Yeah, you know what? I I didn't. I've not been in that dressing room because that's uh, an interesting germaphobe, uh, an interesting concept. I think I'll pass that. I thought you were going to say filled with water and koi fish. You, <laughs> no, I don't think that's. But no, kitty kitty litter rule today. Oh my God, the kingdom rejoices at this news. <laughs> that's that's not that's not the Manson vibe at all. And plus, I didn't have I, I, no. I didn't have I, one of those I, little kitty litter shovels in case you know I had to cover something up to to get to the bar. Um, What's in it for me? Kitty litter. Yeah, <laughs> that's where that's where David Coverdale draws the line. Draws the line at kitty litter. Yeah, well, yeah. I have two kitties, so I, you know, they're, hopefully they're in their own fabulously Japanese-made toilets as I'm away. Right. Yes, and and um, and I'm I'm so excited that in the absence of touring, that you've been so busy um, revisiting some of um, this great white snake music that we've all obviously loved over the years. It is a trilogy um, that starts with an album that comes out Friday, which is the rock album. And um, it's uh, as titled, it's, it's the, the, the best rock hits from white snake, but there's also a bunch of uh, deep cuts on there. So, uh, and there's a yeah. picture of it right there on white vinyl, which is so cool. Um, I'm a huge vinyl collector. So this is, this stuff is perfect for my collection. Well, we, How do you pick the songs on these, here? John, we've cut these at 45 RPM. You'll be okay. astonished compared to, don't put it on 33. Otherwise we'll be the Osman brothers circa 74. <laughs> um, but no, it's uh, 180 grams of the very finest vinyl. Yeah. Uh, and recorded at uh, for so play it back at forty five rpm. It's it really is the the, no, the difference is staggering for an audio file. Fabulous. Yeah, no, agreed. I love when um, I love when bands release new music on vinyl and they, and they record it for forty five because it does sound a lot better. But mm -hmm. but the music in general, you know, because I've been listening to it the last couple of days. Now, obviously, I I know all this material uh, from being a fan, but uh, you want to talk about, you know, kind of what you've done with it, the, the fresh cone of paint you put on this stuff? Yeah, the fre that's exactly how it's been a labor of love. With having so many different producers over the years, engineers, different technology, I'm coming up to like 50 years as a recording artist. So obviously technology's changed, where broadcast quality's changed. So I wanted to uh, to bring a lot of my work up to date in terms of the sonic and to give it uh, a consistent sonic don so that a song from 35 years ago on slide it in fits in beautifully with a song we recorded last year and we i think we've achieved that with a a super young uh, mixer called chris collier who's been helping michael mcintyre my co-producer and i uh, and professor tom gordon um, our studio uh, boffin um to put these things together uh, and and the the red white and blues trilogy is basically their sampler albums for box sets to come uh warner brothers and i rhino records and i had uh, absolutely on the same page to how, how we can make this catalog fresh again. Give, as, if, as you see a house, 35 years old, could use a fresh coat of paint. That's a simple analogy. But um, we have the, the rock album, which is not necessarily, well, we've got some of the hits on, but as you say, deep cuts. It's a great way to describe them. Um, but they're all remixed. Uh, there's tracks from an album I had called Restless Heart, I Refuse to Give Geffen, uh, uh, and I wanted it to be more organic after the very epic uh, productions of Slip of the Tongue and then Coverdale Page with Jimmy. Um, so I wanted to get back to being more organic, and then five minutes later, totally, totally was disappointed I didn't layer it with more butch guitars. <laughs> so we had Joel, the incendiary one. Joel came <laughs> Joel in. Joel Oakstra, yep. in Vegas for sure. We're in Reno, like 50 minutes away. So he came in, doubled all these, another Flying Dutchman, doubled all of Adrian's guitars. And then we got the amazing uh, Hammond player, well, keyboardist, uh, Derek Sherinian, who just came in and brought the spirit of John Lord to a lot of a lot of songs that, you know, it's an element that a lot of my fans miss is when we, we lost John, of course. Um, but it really is, it's made it much more formidable and more, and more 
Uh, it's got a consistent white snake sound. Followed up in October, I think we got white snake love songs, which is not songs to, to run a hot bath and cut your wrist by, but these are just <laughs> like really choice. Four, I think three or four unreleased songs, beautiful uh, songs. Opens with Love Will Set You Free. And then I think it's February, we have uh, White Snake the Blues album with the big epics like Steal Your Heart Away, Crying in the Rain, Looking for Love, uh, Slow and Easy. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with, uh, with my relationship with Wino. And, and we'll see this week how uh, people receive uh, the, the rock album. It's fabulous. It's number one in Japan. It hasn't even been released yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they didn't even get a bonus track this time. I know, I know, I know. They didn't ask. That was They're, a bonus. But, uh, but uh, yeah, and, for, and again, for the vinyl nuts like me out there, you have uh, the rock album, which is on white vinyl. You got the love uh, album coming in October. Love songs, darling. Love, love songs, baby. Love songs. That'll be on red <laughs> vinyl, of course, for the heart. Yes. And the blues album. Well, you can guess blue vinyl record. Right there. Um, now I see, I notice. You know I think um, you know some of the songs could be really interchangeable on on all the albums. Uh, you know yeah. because even the rocks, a lot of your rock songs are love songs. So how do you sort of yeah. how do you sort of split them up and go this one belongs on this album and so forth? Well, it, it took a while. Um, but that's why I said it was a labor of love, time and resource. And I was still working on running orders last year when we finished in our uh, South American tour. I think that was at the end. Was that the end of the world tour? South America last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was still working on it then. So I sent it down to the president of uh, Rhino, um, Mark Pincus. And he gave me his opinions. And of course, I work with people whose opinions I trust very closely. Uh, and eventually we got it to, to fit together like a Savile Row glove, darling. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can only afford the, the $5 gloves off the streets here in New York. But um, <laughs> well, we're all right now. We've got the plastic ones. The, lovely. Yeah, and, and masks. The rubber ones. Yeah. Um, a fetishist dream. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Well, so speaking of which... Um, yeah. So, Talking about fetishists, see, yeah, to, yeah, feet. Which, lead, which, uh, which finally we lead into the meat of the interview, fetishism. No, um, but but you are you. You know, I said to this, said this to you on that metal show. You you are the king of romance. Whether whether it's a rock song, whether it's a ballad, whether it's a blues song, uh, you you are the king there. W which song? Which White Snake songs do you think um, are are the best ones to play when you're getting uh, naked with that someone special? Well, I've been assured by lots of disc jockeys around the country that their high school album for the back seat of whatever car there was available uh, was the <laughs> Slide It In album, Slow and Easy. <laughs> okay, so yes. Yeah, sl sl and that apparently became a very, very successful uh, uh, in the strip clubs and strip bars, which, of course, I never frequented. I left. That was all motley. Yeah, you let you let them have that, and they're they're another one. I was at the gentleman's club having a cigar and cognac, of course. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> with the peacock feather fan, right? With the yeah, with the girls. Now, but that's just for show because you um again as uh, you are uh, very lucky. You have the the beautiful Mrs. C. Uh, by yes. your side. Um, but I, I wonder what it would be like uh, for David Coverdale dating here in the year 2020 because uh, things are, are so different. I'd, I'd have to put on like a Zorro persona and I'd walk around with a, <laughs> you know, with a, with, what was it? What was the Princess Bride? Could you get away with that mask? I don't think so. Uh, it's not even something I think about, to be perfectly honest. You know, we, we kept busy at this fabulous oasis of dreams that I'm sitting in, Hook City, <laughs> um, and lots of new things planned. A lot of the Red, White and Blues trilogy, by the way, Don, is a precursor, as I say, a, t a taster for uh, all the rest are going to be box sets. And I don't know whether you're familiar with what we've done with Warner so far. We've, we've released four box sets. Uh, we're just cramming uh, the stuff with material, audio and yep. video. Uh, and I said, we can't just keep giving people, certainly in these economic times, box sets like this. So let's give them something that's affordable. 
yeah. action-packed and a clue to what's coming down over the next five to seven years. Yes, even at my age, I'm planning in seven years. Yeah, no, listen, I, you know, I, I, I say this every week. I'm, I'm so grateful to all the bands uh, that I love and, and some of the new bands that I'm discovering for putting music out during the pandemic, even though they're not able yeah. to tour on them, because, you know, we need something we're sitting home and I'm in, I live in New Jersey. I'm in the, obviously I'm in the metropolitan area here uh, on the East coast and w we're the last people opening up. So for me to be able yeah. to take out a piece of white vinyl and put it on and hear all my favorite white s snake songs. And I should also mention that, you know, for people who, again, who are real audiophiles, you, you, you it's not like you're hearing something very different. You're, you're really getting the essence of all these songs that you love, but in 2020, yeah. Nothing's really lost. The vibe is and I tell you, vibe's when, not I know lost. You're, you're talking vinyl, but when I play, you know, plug my AirPods in on, and play my, my rock album, my vacuuming's done in three, three times as fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> And you and 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 uh and uh, your album Forevermore um and I should uh -huh. I always love to mention especially bands like White Snake that are still making great new music your last album Flesh and Blood terrific before that Forevermore obviously the Purple album was fantastic yeah. right in between those two and uh, you even inspired uh, Mr Jim Florentine to use a song James. How is James? Forevermore. He's at my best. What a beautiful soul. He he used your song at his wedding and it was a oh, my heart. <laughs> it was a beautiful moment. Now he's divorced, but I'm not blaming the song for that. It's can't be the song. The song's it's, forevermore for Christ's sake. <laughs> not for five minutes. No. Well, t two years, <laughs> give or take. But yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, your, your music really uh, inspires everybody. Shut up and kiss way. me might have been a more appropriate. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So there's some there's a few interesting moments in White Snake history that um, because I've been going down the the White Snake rabbit hole lately. Oh dear, um, <laughs> I wouldn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Don, how white was my snake? I used protection. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was very it was very satisfying. I uh, <laughs> I found the concert from let's see it was uh 1994 where uh warren d martini from rat actually yes, fi filled yes. in on guitar in, in st petersburg russia do you have any memories of that night oh warren's a doll yeah he was superb i don't think he's with rat anymore is he he uh, is not he was a guy called it didn't look like him super player um i was actually putting together uh after all all the the nuttiness and stuff with uh the slip of the tongue, the liquor and, liquor and poker world tour and the Coverdale page stuff. I wanted to get back to something organic. So we were looking at a project called the dog's bollocks. Um, and at the, <laughs> you know, to go out and just do theaters and stuff. And, uh, with girl singers, maybe horns. I, I was very, I love soul music, you know? Sure. Um, however, EMI, uh, in, in the, in the rest of the world and Geffen here released the white snake greatest hits and it did amazing business. So I was pressured by the record companies and my agent to, to make it a white snake tour, which I didn't feel it was. So I had to, you know, I wanted to go out there and do some Almond Brothers music, you know, Otis Redding, just have fun. Uh, but, but it ended up that, you know, Warren is a super, uh, organic style guitar player it's yeah. like earl slick that kind of yeah it looks like yeah. he was born with the strat you know on him um you know pagey keith richards they're just townsend it just looks like an extra limb yeah <laughs> uh and he was a super so brought a lot of a lot of uh, new approaches to the songs I, I enjoyed working with warren a lot wish him all the best yeah, that should that mentioned so people could see that on YouTube. And then there was um, a time where actually, uh, you, I, I guess your your pipes took the night off, and your old keyboard player Rick Serrate, <laughs> 1999, yeah. Reykjavik, Iceland, and he sang oh my the, God. the goddamn oh, set. Yeah. That was that was like one of the uh, internet things. When was a White Snake show? Not really a White Snake show, or whatever. But we. The whole island had closed down uh, for two shows at the end of, I think it was the end of the 1990 World Tour. Yeah. Was Reykjavik the end or Japan, Michael? Can you remember? 
uh, there was, oh, was the end of Europe, yeah, at least. Yeah. Europe, yeah. So we go there. There's like airlines come in from fit all over Scandinavia. So the whole island's coming to these shows. And I got that worst fever after the first night. And we had a band, a UK band, really good band, uh, the Choir Boys. Sure. They I love that. There. So in, in between my fever, the tour manager and I discussed the White Snake. The jam band should open for the choir boys, and uh, there was quite a few Vikings. I'm not sure knew the difference. It was quite a, quite the lost weekend, I understand. <laughs> he did, he did he did a nice job, and I'm going to show clips from those at the end of the show just for people yeah. to see because it's such an anomaly. Because your you know your voice has been so iconic over the years. <laughs> Didn't Steve Vai sing something like some blues song or whatever? I yeah he I might he might have yeah there's uh, there's I a, no, we had a guy called Pickman who was pulling guitar picks out of his ass and flicking them into the audience. <laughs> he used to work with uh, Edward Van Halen, I think. Pickman, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Pickman. <laughs> well, listen, you, you, yes. you. Whether it's White Snake or any other band, obviously, you know, you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Deep Purple. I mean, the the, the musicians that you've been surrounded with are second to none, and that includes the current uh, version of White Snake with with Red Beach and Joel Hoekstra and Michael Devon and Tommy Aldridge, and certainly, I mean, those guys. Haley Loopy, don't forget our Italian stallion. On the keyboards, absolutely. And, we, you know, that, another incident in, in White Snake history that you don't even know about is we, we almost lost, I thought we almost lost Michael Devin, your bass player, um, on the Monsters of Rock cruise. Um, myself, Michael, and uh, uh, Brent Woods, who plays guitar with Sebastian Bach, decided, oh, let's go out. You know, there's a, a stop in the Bahamas. Let's go out and spend the day on the beach together, as three young, handsome men like us do. And uh, we went out and we were standing in the ocean, just up to our knees. And then, you know, Michael's a very compact guy. Maybe about oh, yeah. uh, very powerful. He's the only guy who's in shape at the end of a tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. He's in better shape. Uh, yeah. but, he's, but he's about 140 pounds. And he says, I'm going to go for a swim. Well, high tide rolls in. And Brent and I keep looking to make sure he's okay because he's so light. Now you tell me. And Jeez. next thing you know, <laughs> we're talking. And a minute later, we turn around. Michael's nowhere to be seen out in the ocean. We're like, oh my God, the current's taking him out. That's it. Uh, White Snake's over. We lost our friend. Um, and so we went back on the beach and we walked all the way around where there were these rocks and we went on the other side and there he was uh, laying on a beach chair. He, he was Surrounded okay. Surrounded by but... mermaids. I know, Devin. Come on. <laughs> But yeah. Siren sang him and brought him over there. He's irresistible. He's a beautiful soul. He he is. He's a, he's a great, uh, not only a great uh, musical talent, but obviously a great swimmer as well. So <laughs> we're, we're glad that he's uh, still with us. I'm glad he was the strongest sperm. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. He would be. A, he would be a phenomenal sperm uh, swimming upstream. <laughs> the Michael Devil gene pool. Yeah. Hey. So before I let you go, um, yeah. uh, any talk at all about uh, 2021 touring for White Snake? Well, um, I'm sure you heard that I'm still uh, awaiting surgery for my uh, bilateral inguinal hernias. I'm sorry. I have a delicate delicate young assistant here who hates me talking about my nether regions, but uh, it's still not regarded as safe for me to actually go into. There's a kind of spike going on with uh, the Rona, as it were. Sure. Uh, and I'm taking his counsel. There's been a great, a great deal. It's, it's hugely important, Don, as you can imagine, for me after an almost five decade career to be able to do my appreciation and gratitude to the world tour, but I can't commit to anything until I see physically how I'm going to be and really how the world, what kind of condition the world is in. Because, you know, the idea of the singer of Whitesnake retiring at, at 69 is just very, very intoxicating to me. <laughs> I can't wait to design the T-shirts, but I'm just holding the energy that that's going to be possible. Yeah. And, and I hope so, because it's been a, a breathtakingly glorious um five decades for me and being totally supported when, you know, by the music and by the audience ac across the world. It's a, 
um, yeah, it's and, and through social media, people know how much I love and appreciate the support that they give me. By the way, I've got to tell you, it's at 33. It was the, uh, the yeah. album, 33 RPM. I was going to be at 45. I was going to mention. Uh, we, that's we bo- the slided in one. That's the slided in album. Yeah, we both got a little caught up in, uh, in the, in the we vinyl. Had too many, we had too many tracks. Too many tracks, dude, <laughs> to put on the vinyl. So, yeah, it's uh, but it still sounds fabulous. Yeah, well, and especially now, uh, today's day and age, and there it is again, the rock album out this Friday. Uh, most important thing is is your health, um, yeah. I, you know, because anytime you go out and see the snake perform, um, it is uh, an incredible experience. Uh, so we, we hope we see you again, but we're going to start with the rock album. And then uh, when the other two come out, hopefully we'll uh, speak again. And uh, again, I love spending time with you. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Don. Take care. My love to you and yours. Stay safe and well, you lot. Be well.